Do I know what's worse than advertising? Being someone who advertises. Anything worse than that? Well, being blamed for advertising when you aren't a advertising. Two days ago, it was April Fool's Day. And one of the funnest parts about April Fool's Day on the internet is clicking links and hoping that you don't get rickrolled. So when a scratcher posts an April Fool's project and someone puts a YouTube link, is it more likely that they'll be A, advertising a video they made on YouTube on Scratch for some reason, or B, trying to rickroll someone? Obviously B, you don't advertise your YouTube videos on Scratch. And if you do, who are you? It pains me to see comments on April Fool's projects with rickroll links being told to stop advertising. They aren't advertising. It's a link. Advertising and linking something are not directly related. You might be defending yourself, if you're one of those people, by saying, well, I'd click the link to make sure it's not advertising, but if I do, it'll give them views. And no, it won't. A lot of people don't know this, but views are only counted if you click the green flag. Meaning, you can check links to make sure they're not advertising, without giving the ad potential advertiser any acknowledgement. Incognito. Joey, hand me a link. Now the first thing you should do if you're going to post a YouTube link in Scratch, that's a Rickroll, is make sure you use the official Never Gonna Give You Up song by Rick Astley. There are people who joke around saying, oh, I've memorized the Rickroll link, you can never get me. And yeah, if you use the official video and someone recognizes the link, then you won't be blamed for advertising because they know it's a Rickroll. Guess who wins in that situation? You do. Using one of those link disguisers automatically makes you infinitely more suspicious because it could be you advertising your YouTube video for some reason. Who knows? It's like walking into a bank with a ski mask on. You don't walk into a bank with a ski mask on. For those of you who want to use this trick, the first four digits of the Rickroll code are DQW4. So if you see a YouTube link that starts with DQW4, they aren't advertising a YouTube video. They're just trying to trick you. And if you're one of those people who reports advertisers in your free time because you have nothing else to do, and a link starts with DQW4, don't report it. It's not anything to be worried about. But then again, most people who report advertisers are like eight years old and probably don't have the detective skills needed to decipher a link. So it's probably best to not rickroll people on Scratch. It's not a very safe environment for the prankster or the person getting pranked because you might just get reported and that's just dumb. So in conclusion, as most of these end, advertising bad. There, I said it. Those two words could have been the entire video and it still would have been worth your time. In a more traditional conclusion, if you're going to prank someone on Scratch, be sure to use the official rickroll link and not disguise it at all because that's suspicious. That's all I have though, bye. What a tease. The Scratch team brought back the cat blocks for April Fools, as I predicted. And guess what? People still like them. So why don't you have them as a toggleable feature in like the edit drop down menu? It would certainly be a lot nicer than half the useless trash up there, like the tutorials button and the, the conveniently located share button in the toolbar. Why would you ever use that button? Why would you share the project before you've tested it? or written in the description. Why is there a share button in the editor? That's stupid. That's not what I'm here to talk about, because today's topic is assumptions, specifically those made by new Scratchers. The number one most annoying assumption about Scratch is, well, Scratch is advertised as like a platform where you can make games. So when a new Scratcher sees something like an animation, it's just really annoying when they ask, how do you play? And really, why? This has never happened to me and I'm thankful for it, but I see it all the time on projects in the Explore tab. People just asking why, how do you play it? Or the game's not working on a animation. And it's just ridiculous. I hope I never get on the Explore tab. That would be a nightmare. But another assumption, and probably a bit more sinister of one, is when a project in another language gets featured and everyone's like, uh, it's not in English. This is literally unplayable. And no, you're wrong. You're so wrong. You're incredibly, unbelievably wrong. Just because you can't read the language doesn't mean you can't still play the game. If it's an animation, then yeah, you might not be able to understand it. But if it's a game and you can figure out the controls by just simply pressing buttons, 
then there's no problem. Why are you complaining? That is the most annoying assumption I've seen in Scratch. And I've said what I wanted to say. And so I guess this is going to be a short episode, which is good because I've had people who've told me that they've watched the entire Billy Nut Joe thing series and they said it took hours. And I am honestly surprised I did not think I recorded that much of my opinions. But this has been Billy Nut Joe's rant and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>Yes, yes, 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 yes,
But then again, I could be the stupid one here, and the songs, people actually enjoy those songs, but I'm pretty sure most people don't appreciate people using the same song over and over again. You know what? I think standing on the right side of the screen makes my arguments less valid. That's probably why you always stand here, because you don't talk, and you don't have any arguments to make valid. I think I just discovered the magic of screen-side argument validations. What am I saying? Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying I should go back to the left. This has been Billy Nutter's Rant, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, 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 before you start talking, think about this. You know that Griff Patch guy? The one with, like, 200,000 followers? Well, guess what? Here's what you're gonna do. Here's what you're gonna do. You gotta go to a secondary platform and amass a million followers, let's say, more or less. And then, once you've done that, tell them to create Scratch accounts and then follow you. There are already, like, thousands of people with millions of followers on other social medias. So if they just tell, if they just make a Scratch account and tell their followers to follow them, then everyone can have more followers than Griff Patch. Wow, that is evil. That's possibly the worst thing that's come out of your mouth. And what makes it even worse is that that's probably true. Which makes it even worse because that's probably the only true thing you've ever said. Get out. Okay, but just remember, there are tens of thousands of people who can replace Griff Patch at any moment. Bye. Griff Patch is the most followed user on Scratch. 200,000 followers, which is like a third of a million. As far as I know, he's always been the most followed person on Scratch. But why? Well, because most of the people on Scratch are not concerned with followers. If they really were, then they could probably do what Supernova was talking about, but who would actually pull a scam of that level just to get more followers than some guy on Scratch? That's ridiculous. But it is possible. And a problem with that strategy, I guess, is now you have a million followers on Scratch, but guess what? Most of the people only created an account to follow you, so you won't actually have any followers, really. They'll just be a bunch of, you'll have a high number, but no one will actually view your projects. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I'm sure everyone will be angry if someone actually did that in real life, because they don't deserve it. They really don't. And if anyone ever actually does do that, don't blame me. Blame me instead. I take full responsibility. Most people know that apparently the Explore tab is a death sentence. Most projects that aren't by popular scratches on the Explore tab get reported for no reason. But that's not what I'm talking about. If you want my opinion on false reporting, here it is. Two words. It's stupid. But what I'm really here to talk about is that I've seen some rant projects on Explore tab recently. Not mine, obviously, but they're basically just projects with nothing in them, empty projects, and there's just a wall of text in the instructions, and that's the rant. And sure, yeah, low effort, but it gets the job done. But false reporters see those kinds of projects and go, well, all this project is is complaining, so obviously it makes perfect sense to report it, right? And no, you should never report a project unless it's like breaking the community guidelines. Sharing your opinion is not breaking the community guidelines. And you might be wondering, how have I done 70 plus rants and not gotten in trouble once? Well, here's how. Person who has an opinion on Scratch. The first and most obvious tip is if you're going to share your opinion on a rant form, don't do it when you're angry. If you're angry, then you'll come across as angry. And no one likes to listen to an angry person complain about stuff. It also helps to counterclaim yourself with a rebuttal, as I do constantly. But then again, I can see why you wouldn't want to counterclaim yourself with a rebuttal. Oops, I did it again. If you're being more serious about a topic, then try using self-deprecating jokes. Make fun of yourself instead of other people. That'll make, that'll prove to the people watching that you can be serious while also still being funny. And try to put a smidge more effort in. Anyone can just write a paragraph and put it in a blank project, but recording yourself saying the words can indicate tone so people can tell if you're being serious or not. And if you're not terrible at comedy like me, Include some jokes, because everyone likes jokes. So, the starter kit to making a good rant on Scratch is medium effort, not purely text, not entirely serious, 
share the other side of the argument constantly. And make fun of yourself if you can, and feel comfortable with that. Being on the Explore tab is dangerous, and there's a far less chance of getting reported if you're funny. Although I'm pretty sure everyone watching this has never been on the Explore tab, but it's good to keep in mind, I guess. And obviously, the best way to not get reported on the Explore tab is simply to not be popular enough to be on the Explore tab. That's the strategy I've been going with. This has been Billy Nitro's Guide to Rants, and I hope you enjoyed. Last time I talked about the built-in Scratch tutorials, I only briefly covered a few of them. But now, I'm going to give my opinions on every single one, just like I did for all the extensions. The first tutorial is called Getting Started, and it literally just says, add a move block, add a say block, and then the tutorial ends. Great tutorial. The next tutorial is one of the most iconic tutorials, Animate a Name. And it just says, create a bunch of different sprites with letters that spell out your name, and then make them spin or change size. Which is not only a terrible way of going about Scratch, because everyone knows that having one sprite is better than having like five. The next tutorial is called Imagine a World, and it's actually a decently long one. It has a bunch of different stuff like how to use the say block, which in my opinion should never be used, it's terrible. And tragically, even the Scratch team advises using the hat blocks that say when key is pressed, even though using those kinds of blocks makes your controls incredibly terrible, and you should almost always use a looping if statement. So if left key is pressed, not a hat block that says left key pressed, because that's dumb. That means that you'd have to constantly, if you use the hat blocks, you have to constantly press the left key in order to activate the script, while as the forever loop makes it move when you're pressing the left button, so you don't have to be constantly pressing the left button. The next tutorial is called Make Music, which is basically the same thing, but instead of the say block, it uses the sound block, and it still uses the control hat blocks. This is infuriating. Please stop telling people to use them. The next one's called Create a Story, and is basically the same thing as Imagine a World. After that is Make a Chase Game, which not only uses the control hat blocks, but also uses the glide block for collision. The glide block doesn't work for collision. Newsflash. These tutorials are so poorly put together and so pointless that if you showed one of these tutorials to someone and said, this is why I like Scratch, they'd be like, why do you like Scratch? Tell me a real reason. The next two are fairly straightforward. Animate a character, which, yeah, sure, I guess people need to know how to do that, and make a clicker game. And yes, everyone totally enjoys cookie clickers, so let's just encourage more. After that, we have make it fly, which is about using variables as score. And yeah, that's important, but... What really makes this tutorial bad is the fact that it's promoting the Powerpuff Girls reboot. It's The Powerpuff Girls reboot is atrocious. Don't watch it. Watch the original Powerpuff Girls. It's way better. And while on the topic of older things, the next tutorial is called Make a Pong Game. And newsflash, Pong was only considered fun because there wasn't, because it was the first video game and there were no others to choose from. The next two are Code a Cartoon and Animate an Adventure Game. Oddly enough, both promotional tutorials with Cartoon Network characters. Did Scratch have a deal with Cartoon Network to make these or something? I'm very confused. Why is there so many Cartoon Network characters in these tutorials? After that, the next two tutorials actually feature how to use some of the extensions, which is a good thing. There's video sensing, which can be confusing to some people, but then again, if you don't have a webcam and use that tutorial, you're kind of in the dark because you can't use the extension without a webcam. And then, there's even a tutorial on the text-to-speech. Which, sure, lots of Scratchers use text-to-speech. This is actually... It's good that they're teaching people how to do this. Finally, we're finding some decent tutorials. After those decent tutorials, we have a bunch of super simple, and you, everyone should know how to do these tutorials, like adding sprites, adding backdrops, changing size, using the guide block. Blah! Don't use the glide block. And recording sounds, which... How long can that tutorial be? All you have to do to record a sound is click the record sound button. These tutorials are, I think they're in backwards order because the rest of the remaining five tutorials are just as simple. Using the spin block, the hide and show block, basic animation, arrow keys, and graphic effects. Everyone should know how to use them. It's literally a, every single one of these tutorials covers a single block. How, what's the need for a tutorial? And that's every scratch tutorial in depth. 
well, I say in depth because it's more in depth than the last time, but still not very in depth. I may go on to talk about the psychological impact of these tutorials on the human mind, but spoiler alert, they wouldn't be very positive. I say, if you have a sibling who wants to start Scratch, teach them to yourself, because Scratch doesn't know itself very well. You do, though. So, yeah, this has been Billy Nutjo's rant, and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>
by putting one of their sprites, costumes, sounds, or code into your backpack. And there's no, there's almost no way to trace it back to the original owner. That's insane. There's literally no restrictions on what you can or cannot backpack. The backpack is an endless black hole of thievery, anarchy, and lawlessness. But its more innocent uses are actually pretty cool. Like, you can take something from one of your, from your first profile and bring it over to your second, or the other way around. The backpack also acts as a doom square shield, so if one of your projects gets corrupted, anything in your backpack will be saved. For example, when I was working on Billy Nut Joe Save Scratch, near the end of the game's development, I got doom squared. But guess what? I wasn't affected, because I had everything in my backpack ready to go, just in case anything happened. You can go see episode 35 if you don't know what the doom square is. It's kind of strange how remixing credits the original creator, but backpacking some of their stuff doesn't. The two things are basically identical, but one of them is frowned upon simply because of the fact that it's not polished out. What would be cool is if you backpack something from another person and put it in one of your projects, there would be a, a little box like the add comment feature that would say this costume, sprite, backdrop, code belongs to the person that you took it from. Problem solved. Backpacking is now no longer illegal. Your opinion on backpacking will depend on your past experiences and what you know about it. If you know backpacking as only stealing someone's stuff without permission, then yeah, it's a bad thing. But if you know backpacking as a way to protect sprites and stuff like that, and being able to use them in other projects, then it's a good thing. It would also help to be able to empty your backpack and just delete everything in it, because it can get quite cluttered if you don't clear it out every off every so often. An alternative to backpacking a project to another profile is using the file save to computer and load to computer feature. Saving to your computer saves the project to your computer, and pressing the load button loads that project into the project, if that wasn't obvious. And yes, I definitely did just say that saving something saves it, and loading something loads it. Although, knowing Scratch, it wouldn't be crazy to assume that loading a project will just open up a random tutorial. I wonder what would happen if you saved a Doom Square into your backpack. If anyone wants to try that out for science, go ahead, but I definitely won't. That sounds like a terrible idea. This has been Billy Nut Joe's Rant, and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>
It's red because it does something bad. Alright, so, if it is going to be a weather event, like you say, then it should be coming from this way. If it was a weather event, how would someone be able to threaten us with it? You can't control weather. Sure, you can use forecasts if you're a meteorologist, but those are not always accurate because of the fact that weather is always changing. If the bad guy is going to threaten us with a disaster, then it's probably going to be a man-made one. Um, well, on the plus side, I was right. Oh, hi, giant weird monster thing. I was just wondering if you could at least pretend to go down at a couple of hits so I can look good. Well, that went about as expected. Hey, do you have any ideas on how to stop giant robot squids? Oh well, it was worth a try. Although it would be pretty weird if you did. Actually, yeah, I'd prefer you don't have any plans for robot squid attacks. That's being a bit too overprepared. Ah, oh, great. The giant robot is functioning swimmingly. A lucky thing too, considering we haven't tested it. Which, by the way, is another thing they often overlook in movies. How does the bad guy test out the giant city-destroying machines without anyone knowing? Seems unlikely. So, uh, how's your day going? What are you writing down on that clipboard, anyway? Tic-tac-toe? Seriously? Can I play? Not sure why you'd do that. It was a pretty good offer. Since you so kindly demonstrated that physical methods will not work for stopping the monster, obviously that means that the way to stop the monster is... To tell it the good things about Scratch so it stops trying to destroy it. Yes, but it's so big, how are we going to be able to speak to it? I have an idea. Oh, great, a skyscraper. The perfect and safest place to be when a giant robot attacks. How is this a good idea? Well, we're higher up, so that means that the monster will have an easier time hearing us. Yes, if by hearing us you mean killing us. Stop complaining and start uncomplaining. Okay, fine. Hey monster, did you know that all around the world, Scratch is used for... Just what I thought. You know very well it'll take more than just some rusty pipe to defeat me. I've been tasked with protecting the shutdown switch for the robot, and I'm not gonna let some glorified garbage disposal ruin that. So how about you instead just run off? Beep. Whoa, that actually worked. All it took to defeat the giant monster was the power of kindness. That's the kind of stuff you only see on TV. Oh, hi, the squirrel's friend. You just missed the most peaceful monster takedown I've ever seen. What were you doing? Because whatever it was, I'm sure it wasn't as interesting as this. Hey, stop acting like you're the one who stopped the robot and we're just oblivious. That's obviously not the case. <laughs> If you've been on Scratch for a while, you probably know about the discussion forums. If you don't know how to get to them, well, I don't blame you. All you have to do is go to the Scratch homepage, scroll all the way down, and under Community, there'll be a button that says Discussion Forums. It's so hard to get to, but it's so useful. One topic caught my eye on the discussion forums, called The Official List of Rejected Suggestions for Scratch. Today we'll be talking about blocks, new Scratch blocks that will never be added to Scratch because they've been rejected. The first rejected block is called Broadcast Received Boolean. Now, if you don't know what Boolean means, I don't blame you. I don't know what it means either, but a Boolean block is basically one that's shaped like this. You've probably used them before. I think that this block would be useful, but it was rejected because you can simulate its effects using the equals block somehow. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. The second rejected block is a counterpart to when green flagged clicked that says when stop sign clicked. There's obviously a workaround to this because you've probably seen projects where stuff happens when you click the stop sign, but I personally am glad that this will not get added. This would easily be my least favorite block on Scratch if it was added because of the fact that when I click the stop sign of a project, it usually means that I don't want 
to continue watching the project. So if I click the stop sign and then the project keeps going, that's a bit annoying. While as the broadcast message received block was a bit complicated to work around, this next one is just lazy. Point towards sprite, boolean block. You can easily get the same effect with variables. Just, there's literally no point for this. This next one, however, is just, forget about stop sign clips being the worst suggestion on Scratch. This is obviously the worst. There's nothing more terrible than the fourth rejected suggestion block. It is called the ask for money block. Yes, seriously, an actual human being suggested this. Because everyone knows that the reason to use Scratch is so you can make money. No, this is the stupidest thing ever. If this block actually existed and you had to pay money to watch projects, then guess what you can do? Click see inside and remove the money block. Then you get to watch the project for free. Wow, what a great suggestion. Not to mention the fact that there's not a single project on Scratch that's worth paying money for. The next one's a bit better. It's called the social action reporter block, which is basically just a variable that keeps track of the loves, favorites, and views. I guess there's nothing bad with that, but I'm sure it would cause some controversy because people are all like, anything involving loves and favorites is bad because Scratch isn't about popularity, which is the most overused and hollow excuse in the dictionary of excuses on Scratch. The rest of these blocks are not really worth talking about. Cloud lists, yeah, sure, whatever. Lists inside of lists, uh, why would you want that? 3D Scratch, which is just weird. A pie block, which, can you not just type 3.14? Is that really so difficult? Control mouse pointer by hiding the mouse pointer, which would be pretty cool. A forever if block, which will run the script if something's happening, which easy workaround for that. Being able to add letters and cloud variables, that's not needed. And this one surprises me. They're not going to have a permanent option for cat blocks. The forever if block is another one of those lazy ones, like the pointing towards sprite block, because it literally just takes two blocks to replace it. Forever and if. Combine them together and you get forever if. Wow. The most complicated workaround. So, will anyone be sad that these blocks are not being added to Scratch? Well, no, probably. There are very few actually useful ones. Most of them are just lazy or horrible, like the money block. And to be completely honest, in my opinion, I think that if I, they ever add any new blocks, it should be an extension. Because we need more extensions. Well, that was boring. This has been Billy Nacho's Rant, and I hope you enjoyed. So I checked the suggestion studio because I got a notification that there was an update. And the suggestion that someone posted was a bit strange. Ultra Ultimate Gamer says, I don't know why, but something that has to do with slime. Something that has to do with slime? Hmm. I'm not sure that slime has to do with anything. Do you have anything that has to do with slime? Probably not, but I do. You see, your dumb squirrel brain is not developed enough to understand the in-depthness of this suggestion. For the suggestion is not talking about some gooey substance. It obviously saw into the future. For earlier today, I found this. Ta-da! A container. The container may contain a gooey substance, but we will not know its texture until we open it. Please don't open the container. It's probably dangerous. Plus it's green and glowing, like most radioactive things. That meaning that you probably shouldn't open it. Could you repeat that last part? I couldn't hear you over the sound of this container opening. Plus I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. The lid of the container says biohazard, and bio means life, obviously meaning that Whatever is inside this container brings life. Yes, but considering the second part of that word is hazard, meaning danger, we can safely conclude that it means that it's a danger to life. Have fun with your container. I'm getting out of here before I die. There's another reason I'm better than you. One of my superpowers is being immune to radiation. Or at least, I think so. Yeah, on second thought, I think I should be leaving too. <laughs> Alright, suggestion studio time. Imbecile Moose asks, how come there are imitation accounts? Well, I guess there are multiple reasons why there would be imitation accounts. The first one is that they want to trick people into thinking that they're the person they're imitating so that they get more followers, which is, I don't think would work really. Because who just follows someone based on their name? You'd obviously look at their projects, and if you see that they don't have an, that the imitator doesn't have any of the actual person's projects, then you'd say, yep, this is not the real person. 
The second reason is that they really like that person, and they want to be like them, which I'm not sure how having a similar username is being like them, but whatever. And third of all, they could be doing it as a joke, which is probably the most likely reason, because I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but Scratch is not the most professional website. Wait, hold up. Didn't I, didn't I do this before? I'm pretty sure I talked about impersonator accounts in the past, and I'm pretty sure what I'm saying right now is what I said before. Well, let's see what other suggestions are in the suggestion studio. Mass reporting, fame hungry people, fame hungry people, mass reporting. Um, yes, I get that those are problems on Scratch, but they're kind of boring problems. I mean, what else to say about mass reporting, except for the fact that it's not good? Does anyone have a idea that hasn't been talked about before? Yes? Do you have any ideas? Me? Oh yeah, sure. I could complain about me for hours. I hate the fact that I always start with the same three poses. Dit, dit, dit. I hate the fact that I haven't made a new project in like two days. But you wanna know the worst part about me? Who actually likes squirrels? Squirrels are weird. Anyway, this has been Billy Netjo's rant about Billy Netjo's rant, and I hope you enjoyed.